Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma abad faqal Allah tabarik wa ta'ala fi shani habibihi. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa marana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. <coughs> My dear respected brothers and sisters and children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all of you. Uh, the city of Chestermere uh, is giving us the opportunity to share our faith. Uh, and being a Muslim, as uh, you may all know, that Friday is our our Sabbath and uh, Muslims around the world on Fridays they go to mosque just like Christians go on Sundays to worship uh, uh, according to their faith uh, and have offered the congregational prayers and, and the Jews go on Saturdays to their synagogues and they offer their prayers Muslims go to mosque uh, to offer their congregational prayers on Friday um, but because of this COVID-19, uh, uh, the gatherings uh, are very limited or not allowed uh, and, and uh, people are praying at home. And so uh, we will share our faith uh, uh, through this uh, video uh, that will be uh, broadcast uh, uh, to people at home uh, through internet and through the uh, Chestermere uh, City's website. And we are very thankful to the city of Chestermere for um, uh, understanding the diversity in the city and 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 sharing the uh, the uh, the strength of diversity with all of us. It is very important that we understand the importance and the power of diversity uh, in our communities. And and Chestermere is is one of the best example in Alberta in Canada, where um, uh, not only the city. Council uh, recognizes, but the entire community within the city recognizes the importance of diversity within within our beautiful city. In the short uh, uh, period, I will just uh, share some of the thoughts about interfaith understanding uh, based upon my faith, Islamic uh, faith. Um, interfaith dialogue is very important in Islam. Uh, it's uh, mentioned in the Holy Quran um, and it is uh, very obvious in the teachings and, and uh, of our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Uh, Prophet Muhammad has written letters to uh, during his time uh, 14 centuries ago uh, to various uh, countries and head of states and one of his famous letters was sent to a Christian monastery in Egypt called Saint Catherine. It is one of the oldest Christian monas monastery uh, in the world uh, in Egypt, in St. Catherine. Um, and Nabi Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, uh, sent a letter and, and expressed uh, his uh, solidarity, his assurances uh, to people of Christian faith that uh, when Egypt became a part of the Muslim uh, state, that how the Christian uh, people of Christian faith will be supported and will be protected and they will have the freedom to practice their religion. This is studied right from the beginning uh, during the time of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. When Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him uh, came to Medina, he migrated from the city of Mecca to Medina. Uh, at that time Medina was a, a very diverse city. Uh, Medina has a people of various faiths. There were a large uh, population of Jewish community. There was a large population of uh, tribal uh, f uh, religions, uh, pagans, uh, and then Muslims also came and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him migrated from, uh, from Mecca to Medina. And then he signed an agreement with the people of uh, uh, all faiths uh, in, in the city of Medina that included the Jewish faith, the tribal religions, the pagans and the Muslims and and it, it is it's called covenant of medina it's called in arabic it's called mithaq e medina and that mithaq or covenant uh, clearly explains that everyone of us uh, in the city of in the state of medina will have freedom to practice our own faith and 
each other protection will be upon each other's responsibility so that cohesiveness and understanding or community understanding of even with uh, having different faiths was practiced during the time of prophet muhammad peace be upon him right in the city of medina in the in the holy quran uh, allah wa ta'ala says uh, that when you talk to uh, people of christian faith or uh, jewish faith uh, you do not start from confrontation and that's what it is forbidden in our faith that uh, when we have a dialogue our dialogue should not be that um, that i have to win and i have to defeat the other faith uh, person no <clears throat> that's not the idea and that is not a, a recommended that uh, in our faith in islam in the holy quran in in the third chapter of the holy quran is called surah ali imran and ali imran is the ancestors of prophet jesus christ peace be upon him he is in fact the father of uh, mary uh, the mother of jesus christ peace be upon her and uh, and allah tabarak wa taala says how how you establish uh, dialogue with the people of the book means christians and the jews uh, and and quran says qul bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul ya ahlal kitab ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum alla na'budu illa allah wa la nushrika bihi shay'un wa la yattakhidha ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min dunillah o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell the people of the book means the jews and the christian come on one statement that we all share together between us between you and us that we only worship almighty god who is our creator and he has no partners and no associate and we do not uh, consider uh, our religious leadership uh, as as our gods uh, we do not consider Uh, each other as gods rather there is only one god uh, who has created all of us so you can see that there is a, a commonality uh, especially among the uh, three abrahamic faiths uh, christians and jews and muslims uh, that we believe in one god the creator and uh, we all share one very important personality that prophet abraham and he is the patriarch for all three faiths and, and that's what we must consider that uh, that prophet abraham uh, who is the father of isaac prophet isaac peace be upon him and and the christians and the jews are from uh, from isaac's side and and the second son uh, and the first son basically of abraham peace be upon him was ishmael and prophet muhammad peace be upon him is from the ishmael side so uh, f- through both sons isaac and ishmael peace be upon them we go to the patriarch sayyidna ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam prophet abraham peace be upon him so we share a lot of uh, commonalities and let me just give you a few examples uh, a lot of people uh, have a, a huge misunderstanding about some of the uh, um, teachings of islam and 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 then we need to understand that islam does not teach hate towards uh, anybody uh, whether jews or christian or people of faith or no faith or agnostic or atheist it is the requirement of islam that uh, that we we uh, respect god's creation and we know that all of us regardless of our faith regardless of our ethnicity regardless of our color of skin regardless of what language we speak regardless of our ethnicity we were all created by almighty god and that's what islam is focusing as you may know that jerusalem was conquered during the time of Prof, uh, Pro, uh, the second caliph of islam hazrat umar and when muslim came to jerusalem and, and and then took over the keys of the city then hazrat umar now who is hazrat umar hazrat umar is the companion of prophet muhammad peace be upon him he embraced islam in front of prophet muhammad peace be upon him and when prophet muhammad peace be upon him passed away he was the second head of his state uh, the first head of his state was hazrat abu bakr when hazrat abu bakr passed away then hazrat umar took over and then he became the the head of his state uh, islamic country and and during his time in power the jerusalem was uh, was conquered by the muslims 
And Hazrat Umar came all the way from Medina to, to Jerusalem to take the key from the, from the bishop of the city. And when he arrived, he saw the, the, the place of worship where the Jews pray is at a dump ground of the whole city's garbage. Because the, the, the king at that time uh, was a very anti-Semitic and, and, uh, and, and did not treat the Jews very well. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, no, may peace upon him, he went there and he saw the Jews' place of worship was uh, filled with the uh, garbage. Hazrat Umar cleaned it with his own hands and his army cleaned the whole garbage and cleaned it and asked the Jews to come and worship there. This is a historical fact. No one can deny. The companion of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he did not make it as, as, as a mosque there. He knew that this is a place of worship for Jews, so he kept it as a place of worship of Jews and he himself participated in cleaning that whole area where the Jews used to pray near the Temple Mount. During the time of Sayyidina Umar ta'ala, another story. Hazrat Umar came from Medina to visit Syria and he saw uh, on one of the streets that there was a, bag, a very elderly person and knocking at the door and he was begging for food and begging for money. He was a beggar. He saw this man is uh, knocking doors and he's uh, uh, asking for money, he's asking for food, he's asking for help. Hadith Umar went to him and he said, why, why are you begging money? He said, no, I have no money. I'm an old man. I cannot work. So I survive uh, on, on going door to door and, uh, and asking for uh, money and food. That person was a Jewish person. You know, Hazrat Umar told him that when you were young, you worked hard and you paid your taxes. It's called jizya. You paid your taxes. By the way, it's not discrimination against non-Muslims. Muslim, in an Islamic country, Muslim pay tax and non-Muslim pay tax. Muslim pay tax and that is called zakat and a non-Muslim pay tax which is called jizya. It's not a discrimination, it's not second grade citizen, it's equal citizen. Why these two categories separate? Why the Muslim pay zakat and why the non-Muslim used to pay? It doesn't exist, this system does not exist anymore anyway. But during that time, they used to pay jizya. It's, it's not because out of discrimination or out of racism. No, the reason is Islam requires, this is Islamic requirement, Islamic law, that the money collected from non-Muslim in the country should be spent on them, not to be used their money on Muslims or propagation of Islam. The money from collected from, the tax money collected from the Muslims what is spent on Muslims only, money collected from the non-Muslim, what is spent on non-Muslims only. So in order to keep this separate, and that is the re reason uh, the, the tax money that is collected from non-Muslim used to be called jizya, and the tax money collected from Muslim used to be called zakat, in order to keep them separate and not to spend each other's money on each other. And that's the reason. The Hadith Umar told this man, when you were young, you, you paid your taxes and, and now you are old man and you cannot work and you cannot pay your taxes and we have left you to bed and go do, door to door. That's not going to happen in my government. He went back to Medina. He started a scholarship for him, what we call in today's time, the, uh, the funding from the government or what is called the financial support from the government, he started for him. And he, anyone in, in, in his estate, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, who would go through this hardship of economics, then the government was responsible to financially support the citizens of the country. This is 14 centuries ago. This is the companion of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and head of a state of the first Islamic country on the planet Earth. In Medina, Dunmudamura. One day, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was walking. 
with his companions and he saw there was an elderly person who was walking ahead of him. Prophet Muhammad used to walk a little fast, but when he saw this elderly person walking very slowly ahead of him, he started walking very slow. One of the companions told him, Oh, Messenger of God, this person is a Jew. So he, he was saying that this person is a Jew, why we need to show respect to him? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told him, Do you believe that he was born out of a different Adam than me and you? We were all born from the same one Adam, peace be upon him. And that's what the humanity is the same. And he says, no, I'm not going to go ahead of him. Let this person walk slowly and we will walk slowly. Show to respect for him. So that's what the Islamic teachings are. I fully understand that there has been bad rulers who have treated non-Muslim minority in their countries very badly. But there are many Muslim rulers have been in the history who have treated Muslim very badly in their own government, under their own government. So it's the bad rulers who should be blamed, not the religion, because religion does not teach these kind of teachings. In Islam, the importance of interfaith dialogue and respecting for uh, other faiths is, is, is a part of the Islamic teachings, part of our morality, part of our tradition, and part of our basic beliefs of Islam. My dear brothers and sisters, we live in this blessed country of Canada. We have, we, have, we have people around us who have different faiths. Some people have no faith. But what we share, we share our common humanity. We are all Canadian. And that's what counts. And this, why, and this diversity that we share around us is a strength for all of us. Instead of hating each other because of a dif difference in beliefs, we should love each other because we are diverse. Uh, we, we are diverse people, and this diversity is our strength. May Allah keep our Canada safe. May Allah remove this COVID-19 from from the entire planet. May Allah those who are suffering because of this COVID-19, may Allah heal them, cure them, and uh, give them complete health. And may Allah, those who are in isolation or quarantine, may Allah keep them safe as well. May Allah bring back our prosperity uh, to all of us. A lot of people have lost job. A lot of people have lost business. May Allah uh, remove this calamity from all of us and everybody go back to their normal lives as we used to have before. May God bless city of Chestermere, our province Alberta, and our country Canada. Thank you very much. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاءَ